Good morning. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Another episode of Pop Apologist. Chandler. Hi. Very happy to be with you today, here today, Sister Bledsoe. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, you know, gathered in this place. i um, happy to be recording on this holiday weekend. Um, <laughs> let's <laughs> that makes fun of let us. it rip. <laughs> I'm, that By was the sarcastic. Way, also, that was sarcastic. Chandler and I are recording on Sunday morning, everyone, because I'm um, running up to running up. I'm going oh, up gosh. to New York tomorrow morning. Mm. That's right. Yeah. And it is Sunday morning. So last night was Saturday night, Mm -hmm. which is why I have sunglasses on for this recording because I am hungover. If you are going to ask, um, it's not pretty over here. So anyway, where are you though, by the way? I thought, well, I thought you'd had maybe like eye surgery or some type of glaucoma issue. Um, so my cataracts are flaring up again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you needed to wear your sunnies. Lauren, I am in gorgeous Maine right now. It really does look stunning. It is really beautiful. I think I need to buy land or buy a vacation home up here. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's so green. It's so quaint. It's just the most like lush topography. Yeah. I have always yearned for experiences in the Northeast, like a Vermont beautiful Mm. experience, a Mm -hmm. Maine beautiful experience. I've never made it happen for myself though. So clearly uh, I'm not that serious about it. Yeah. It's like, it's interesting. It looks like you yearn more for St. Bart's, but (laughs) (laughs) that's true. The problem, the problem, if we're just going to, if you want to mention it all is that it's fucking cold there. Most of the time it's too cold. And so you really, there's only really a brief window. I feel like where it's comfortable, right? I mean, it's like, It's like upper 60s right now. It's supposed to get mid 70s today. Precisely. Supposed to get mid 70s. I guess you just, you know, you're the soul. I think you lust after a soul that can handle all types of climates, but you actually are um, are not able to possess that soul. And you don't possess that soul. No, not even close. What did you do last night? I I lust after a soul. I lust after a soul that like wears a lot of muddy boots that has like a mud room before they come into their home, you know, from like going and walking on their land. Um, And you're right, like can brave lots of different types of weather in beautiful, gorgeous, really expensive cashmere. You you know who I think you think you are? You like think you're the mom (laughs) in about time. That's what you think you kind of are. But you're you're actually more like Lily Vanderwoodson or, you know, Serena's mom and Gossip Girl. I mean... I'll take any association. I feel like in reality, I'm um I'm definitely a poor woman's version of the latter. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly. No, I, I I that's absolutely correct, Chandler. I think of myself as some sort of like some sort of hybrid um, between that. For anyone who doesn't know, in about time, they live on this like beautiful English bluff mm-hmm. um, with a blustery, beautiful beautiful verdant countryside outside their window they go out and just enjoy the scenery all the time it's a very thoughtful very bucolic existence that's correct and it just turns out that I like I yearn for warmth I yearn for warmth and scrolling on my phone that's the reality I hear you I absolutely hear you I do think you should give it a shot anyways what were you doing last night that you hung over no it's not even it's honestly I'm not even truly hung over. I'm just yeah. tired because I've gone out to dinner three nights in a row and mm-hmm. imbibed three nights in a row, like mm-hmm. two to three drinks. Yeah. And that to me is just like, I'm a shell of who I could be. Right. Um, if I kept the word of wisdom. Um, right. And, you know, cerebrally. Uh, absolutely true. Um, it's funny you mentioned this three nights in a row as being too much because last night I was talking with Lee and Candace, dear friends who I'm on currently on vacation with. And we were talking about the, um, bachelorette parties these days Mm. and, you know, just chatting about like what's ideal or whatever. And we were just saying how we all kind of don't have the, you know, the taste for the, you know, four to five nights in a row of partying in Vegas that a lot of bachelorette parties oh. consist of. And I was like, for me, that is that nothing could be actually less ideal to me than having to get cute and look hot for three nights, three to four nights in a row to then go out and imbibe. Um, I like, I don't know. I don't know about you, but like the, whenever I see, you know, footage of bachelorette parties, I'm just like, these girls must be exhausted. Okay. They've had to wash and blow dry three times this week. You know, they've yeah. had to 
you know, try to sleep off the previous night's work and rally yet again for the next day, you know, whatever costume it's going to be. And yeah, I just, nothing sounds worse to me. Don't invite me to your bachelorette party. I don't want to go. I mean, I think that I honestly think that like wellness focused retreats and experiences and like hotels are really the future. Um, And I think that you're absolutely correct. There's nothing worse than being on that third night of like some sort of bender, getting ready. You're in the bathroom. Like the first night you, you felt good. Your self tanner was on fleek. The outfits were pressed, not bloated. Exactly. By the third night, you are bleary eyed as you're slapping on that foundation and that concealer. And it is just, it is ratchet at that point you're you're contemplating like will the bride hate me if i wear lululemons to dinner like what type of what type of stomach illness can i fake to get out of you know another night at bubba gum shrimp well and here's the deal here (laughs) exactly um but here's the deal jan i just feel like I personally feel like it's because it's so much drinking. Drinking oh, I is completely the problem. Agree. Yes, yes. Drinking it's day drinking. Is yep. disgusting and poisonous, and it is a poison. And anyway, my my advice to brides everywhere: it is literally just be like drinking is not the is not the move. Okay, I'll say yeah. it in not many words. Yeah, um, you can read between the lines. I, um, I also okay. think yeah, like my ideal would literally be like retreat of some sort wellness rest rest a few drinks here and there but mostly rest no i mean i i think people are gonna hate i don't care i'm so sick of like qualifying i don't care anymore like people are gonna think this is dumb um if you think this is done dumb turn to another free podcast um i chandler personally i personally feel like drinking is for the taste. It's for a little bit of the experience. It's for like the mood and the ambiance. The second the alcohol hits, I just think things start going downhill for me. At yeah. least. Okay. Well, you know, I, I agree. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I'm just always kind of a one to two drink max person. Yeah. Maybe a couple. I'm, I'm, we're lightweights. I'm a couple times. a year. I think I have like three benders in me a year, if that, and honestly, those, that number is dwindling you know, with every passing yeah. day. I don't, you know, I don't even really want to have three benders a year, but I, I can't do it. I don't, I just Ugh. don't think I like it that much. I no, will say, no. and I, I'm going to post a link to these on our story. Um, the early bird gummies are incredible. Courtney turned me on to them. They're okay. amazing. They are maybe my favorite type of gummy experience because is it is very hype? mild. I've seen everyone no. promoting them. I need no, you no, to no. explain I wouldn't, this. I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't, I would not, um, I wouldn't come on here. You know, we don't, we don't do, do you have very, a deal no. with them just yourself. I need to figure out how to get a code from them because it is incredible. So this is what I'm going to say. I, um, when it comes to gummies, I definitely have like tried all sorts, the, you know, higher dosages of THC and, you know, that's a, that can be a full blasting off experience, but the early bird yeah. gummies are very, very mild. Okay. It is like mostly, you know, a body relaxation feeling, which because it is, you know, majority CBD and with a very small amount of THC. So you get a little bit of just like lightness to your mood, but you are mostly just mm-hmm. very, very relaxed, which is to me perfect. And most ideal for like, you know, f- somewhat frequent mm. use. Like I don't okay, want to well, take gonna- a gummy and then be like, okay, I'm going to blast off for the next like four to five hours. And I'm also going to consume about 8,000 calories. Um, I want to like right. take yes. something, feel like a little lighter, feel super relaxed and like, you know, kind of gooey. So I like fall asleep in the best way. And then like, that's, that's the kind um, of gooey. That's, sorry. Sorry if that's gross, but I I'd think like that's to feel like, like hu- human glue. Like sludge. I don't you know. You just want to feel a little, like a little, just, you know, cozy, you know, you just want to like up the mm-hmm. coziness factor and mm-hmm. I, these, these, the early bird gummies do that. Um, and I think they also just, you know, sometimes you can get paranoid if you take a full, you know, regular gummy. So anyways. Okay. Well, I'm going to, well, I'm going to try this in New York. Cause I'm going to have some for you. week. I'm going to see you. Okay. You have some for me specifically. I mean, not like to take if you want to buy them off of me. Oh. No, I'll, I have some for you. I'll give you some. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm excited to try them because anyways. We'll move on, but that's absolutely correct. What you want is just that little feeling of relaxation. Mm-hmm. You don't want 
that what comes with the tail end of the buzz, which is the right. collapsing into the bed, the exhaustion, the right. delirium. The, or um, like the, you know, right. feeling groggy the next day, you know, et cetera. So. Exactly. You don't want what I have right now. Right. And as I'm about to lead us through a deep dive, Chandler, mm-hmm. of the relationships of Natalie Portman. I mean, wow. Natalie Portman, Chandler, went to Harvard University. How am I supposed That's- to account for her life in this mental Honestly. state? That's really fudging annoying that she went to Harvard. It's really fudging annoying. I know. Natalie Portman is a total dork. Um, that's something that's come to light for <sighs> me as I've been reviewing this research. I think I um, hate her. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she reminds me of m- my most odious iterations yes. of myself. Yes, I hate her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so anyway, so should we get into Chandler of the the life and the lovers of Natalie Portman? Please, please take us through. Okay, well, Natalie, okay, was born on June 9th, 1981, but she was not born Natalie Portman. She was born Natalie Hirschlag. All right. So we got oh, a Raquel, wow. we got a Rachel, we got a Lauren, we got a Lala, wow. we got a Jason, we got a Jax, we got a Natalie Hirschlag, Natalie Portman. So she did have a stage name. She did yeah. adopt a stage name. Um, okay. She was the only child to Jewish parents, Avner. Oh, man. Avner is a beautiful name. Avner Hirschlag, an Israeli-born fertility specialist, and Shelley, an American home- homemaker. Cute. They lived in Israel until Natalie was three, and then the family moved to Maryland. Maryland. Is it Maryland or Maryland? Maryland, you idiot. Maryland? Have, you, have anyone ever say Maryland? You see I don't know. It's kind of like everybody. <laughs> she might have a great vocabulary, okay. but she can't, doesn't know how to pronounce Maryland. I was three sheets to the wind three hours ago. So why don't you seriously F off, first of all. Second Maryland. Of all, um, <laughs> I just don't want to be a person describing New Orleans as New Orleans, you know? Like I'm just trying no, to like know my place. Yeah, totally. Totally. I don't think anyone okay. from Maryland is going to come for us for our, you know, gringo or whatever pronunciation i don't want to i don't want to be describing my summer in barcelona okay um (laughs) all right i do appreciate that thank you as a young child natalie began taking dancing and singing lessons with the initial hope to make it chandler to broadway natalie's family later moved to connecticut and then long island which is where she grew up she attended public school and decided early in her life that she wanted to act Natalie's childhood crush, Patrick Swayze, might be the one to thank. Chandler, we've been looking for the person to thank for Natalie's acting career, and here he is. Hi, Patrick hello. Swayze. <laughs> yeah, the search is over. Um, Patrick Swayze, her childhood crush, is the one to thank for her acting career. She loved the movie Dirty Dancing when she was a kid and wanted to wow. act so she could meet him. She told Harper's Bazaar, I think I became an actress just so there would be a possibility that I might meet him one day because he's just like so amazing. Man, that's Harvard material if I've ever heard it. Oh my gosh. She was destined for stardom. Uh, I actually, I want to say, I don't know if this is the moment to break in, but I I did come into this episode with baggage about Natalie Portman. Oh gosh. Okay. So every detail about you, every detail that you reveal about her that makes her cute, relatable, quirky, um, smart, whatever, any positive attribute annoys me further. And this is because she she was Ben's uh, celebrity crush growing up. And that's really freaking annoying to me. I'm going to throw up all over my microphone. What did you just say? I know. I know. I know. The disrespect. <laughs> the disrespect. I know. Oh, my gosh. Benjamin Manning. That's disgusting, frankly. I know. I know. Disgusting. No, I mean we can't hate him for that. I like that he liked a relatively nerdy brunette. That's that's a virtue. Um, but I think the thing okay. here's the thing about Natalie Portman. Yeah, here's the, here's the thing about Natalie Portman. Um, I like how that was a subtle in- insinuation that liking a brunette is a virtue. That was just a total <laughs> joke, everyone. Um, like I do not think that. I do not think that. Although there is a funny quote actually that I will share with you. Uh, Please. Not to be a Natalie Portman, but um, I was listening to a podcast uh, between two poets, um, and they were saying that um, <laughs> <laughs> nothing sounds worse. I want to stab my eyes out with a fork <laughs> thinking about a podcast with two poets. Oh, kill me! 
well, yeah, execute I know. me one now. One, po- <laughs> one poet, and it's one too many. Um, they were saying, though, that in a, I mean, it's not going to, this isn't going to go where you think it's going to go. So let me okay. just get there. Okay. They were saying that in a, in any movie, you know if the guy's a good guy, if his wife or his girlfriend has small tits. Um, and <laughs> I'm, <laughs> the poets were saying this. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Wow. Rare, Talk about their command poets. of uh, the, their command of the English language, the prose they can acquire. Oh my goodness! Wow, Lauren. Thank you. Anyway, I'm not trying to draw the same um, the same metaphor or symbolism with with women with darker hair. Um, okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Did you have any commentary on that? If you agree with that statement from the poets, I mean. The th- I find small tits to be objectively very hot. So I just, I don't get, I honestly don't get it. Like, I'm just so not a big tit girl. So. Okay. Well, you know. You're so I just think they're women, fundamentally so. misguided on what's aesthetic. Wow. Wow. Oh, so. wow. Um, I think you're, you <laughs> might, you might have just alienated 90% of the people who listen to this podcast, but oh, I thank think you. big tits have enough champions. I think I'm good to be like, you know, a staunch defender of a diminutive chest. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyways, um, let's move right along. Okay. So anyway, so here is a clip of Natalie Portman and how she still thinks about kissing Patrick Swayze. I definitely had a big Patrick Swayze crush as a kid and maybe as an adult. Yeah. I wanted to kiss Patrick Swayze. Definitely. She's, she's like foaming at the mouth. She's like, she says that okay ew um, ew that is you need to bleep that i'm not gonna allow you to leave that on this podcast all right we'll bleep it we'll leave it to people's imagination let's just think it's like I, way worse I, I will say though she's it's very breathy it's very it's coming from a place of eroticism within her a hundred percent she's like heaving. disgusting we need a trigger warning someone said that they needed a trigger warning on the patreon when i was describing uh my crush on prince charles and they used the word heaving so i did steal that okay anyway at the age of eight, Natalie stopped eating meat, Chandler. Um, after attending okay. a medical conference with her father. Ding, ding, ding. Annoying as shit. Anytime any children have any sort of moral principles, yes. I just want them to shut up. You know? Greta, are it's you like- listening? Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking I'm just to not you. Into it. Yeah. I like I like children that operate from a place of pleasure seeking you know well and just once again rich coming from quite possibly the most principled 12 year old i've ever come in contact with i'm talking about lauren um but yeah i'm speaking from a place of deep self-loathing but i'm gonna get back to the subject at hand okay Um, okay at the age of eight natalie stopped eating meat after attending a medical conference with her father after dissecting a fish in the sixth grade she stopped eating fish too one more comment what eight-year-old is going to a medical conference another annoying okay that's a detail. very astute observation why did i not pick up on this oh she went there with her father remember her father no, I, is in yeah, the medical still, field the, the, yeah, just the about specialist it. no it's no i know but still why is his daughter going with him to the to a medical conference. I'm sure Chandler that at the time she was like, Oh, I want to study medicine. I want to heal. Um, she was probably like a total daddy's girl in the same way that I was like, I'm going to be a justice be a lawyer truth and law. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> what? I missed the last part. What'd you say? No, I'm just laughing at you. Like pretending to be lady justice. Like I'm going to be a justice for truth and, <laughs> and law. <laughs> just the statue funny. of Liberty. That was Here- my icon. As, you know, Lady Justice and the Statue of Liberty are two different female symbols. Okay. But anyways. I see, I'm... Yeah. Okay. Back to well, Natalie. I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart anymore. Unlike Natalie Portman. Um, and that's the <laughs> likable part about me, Chandler. In 1995, ge- gelatin followed. Okay. So she axed gelatin as well. And in 1997, she stopped eating cheese because it can contain rennet, which is taken from animal stomachs. Okay. She would later read Jonathan Safran Foer's book, Eating Animals, which result in her becoming vegan, as well as opening the door to an extremely awkward event to come in 2014. All right, so buckle in, bitches, because we're going to get there. 
All right. Um, so, Chama, let's talk about Natalie getting discovered. So, okay. according to Vogue, Natalie Portman was discovered when she was 10 and a scout for Revlon approached her in a pizza parlor and asked her if she would be interested in modeling. No, she said, but I would like an agent. I kept my cool. I told him that I wanted to act. She was 10, Chandler. 10. Let's hear her discuss this very experience on Letterman. She regales him with this tale. Um, and I find this clip to be kind of hilarious. So I'm excited okay. to share it with you. Thank you. So she's 13 years old on David Letterman at this time. All right. How, how old were you when you started? Um, well, when I was 10 years old, I, after dance class, I went to a pizza parlor mm -hmm. and, a, <laughs> and a guy from Revlon was there and he wanted me to model for Revlon. So he introduced me to modeling agents and I told him, I don't want to model. I want to act. So uh -huh. they introduced me to acting agents. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? It's like a dream come true. That's like the American dream. Uh, yeah, don't you I guess think? So. I mean, anyway, um, so <laughs> she's like, that's like the American <laughs> dream. <laughs> She's like, is it? I don't know. It just seemed like a casual Thursday after dance class. I think we are, we're giving uh, too much credit to the American dream. I think we're saying that a lot of too many things are, quote, the American dream. But it's neither here nor mm. there. I also think, you know, it's a little bit rich that she's virtue signaling that, you know, she was approached for modeling, but she wanted to do acting, you know. It's definitely a flex. Just, I'm not sure it's if a it's flex. a virtue signal. It's definitely a flex. I mean, no one was approaching either same. of us at the pizza parlors. Oh, I, I, every time I went to the Mission Viejo Mall, I was like, please, God, let one of the talent scouts approach me. Please. Like, I, I was dying to get approached to the mall by a talent scout because I heard that, you know, talent scouts hung out at like mall food courts. I was dying for it. Would have given anything. Also, mom was like very complimentary of us growing up. And so we all yes. thought we were like much more attractive oh. children than we truly were. Mom was like, you are the most photogenic person. And I was like, of course I am. Duh. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get approached outside of Paradise Bakery at the Mission Viejo Mall. Never happened. I I honestly, you know how people say like they look at pictures of themselves when they're younger and they're like, oh my gosh, I was so cute. I didn't even realize it. Like I have the opposite experience. Like mom gave me such high self-esteem. Mm -hmm, I look at pictures mm -hmm. of myself in certain eras and I'm like, wow, I thought I was so much hotter than I was. Like I was no, the delusion. Yeah. I was not attractive until maybe the age of 23. Oh, so you think you're attractive. So you think you're really pretty. Now I don't. Now I, yeah, I think I'm really pretty. <laughs> but yeah, no, none of us were like very super cute kids. It is very correct. Okay. Sorry to our siblings. All right. So at the time she's been doing community theater, but she wanted to act professionally at 12. She was cast in the off-Broadway musical Ruthless. Fun fact, she took over Britney Spears' part after Britney left the show for the Mickey Mouse Club. Um, Natalie was also part of a musical group called World Patrol Kids when she was younger. It's adorable and cringy all at the same time. Um, she was basically part of this like child environmental pop singer group. Child environmental <laughs> pop group. They Did they sing pop about group, climate yeah. change? Yeah, they did, actually. Um, I mean, I, I'm trying wow, to amazing. get past all this, yeah. but we're going to... We're going to put in, Chrissy is going to be so great. She's going to put in a clip right after this that our audience can listen to of, um, of the singing. Um, wow. So Can't unless wait. you want to hear it. No, I think I got it. I got the picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And that's Benny. What were the songs like? Like, um, recycle it, renew it. <laughs> renew it, renew it. <laughs> if only we had a clip of the World Patrol oh, don't kids. You? Oh, God, if only oh, no. you did. No. Yeah, we do! <laughs> All right, so Natalie got her big break when she was 12 and was cast in the movie The Professional. Directors were shocked that she had never taken an acting class since they auditioned over a thousand girls for the role, and Natalie was by far the best actor of them all. Um, and it was at this time that Natalie professionally changed her name to Natalie Portman. Okay. All right, so Natalie continued to act throughout high school, but the movies were not global blockbusters that had her faces on magazines yet. Her life and career were able to be relatively separate from each other. So here's a clip of Natalie talking about her life in high school and how she was voted to be most likely to be a contestant on Jeopardy. Can I just say, saying that you were that you were voted to be most likely to be a contestant on Jeopardy as like a beautiful actress 
it's just it's just such a flex it is so giving Meghan Markle on the Netflix docuseries being like I was a smart girl I didn't rely on my looks I was smart when I was approached to be a model at eight I said no I want to do a more serious career I want to act okay no I know I'm beautiful Lauren this is what I am trying to 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 bear during this entire recording during this entire deep dive like I don't understand who wrote the source material for this deep dive was it Natalie herself or uh, because it just it is just flex after flex after flex so it's so funny Chandler so I don't know if you've noticed but her career um has taken a bit of a of a downwards turn um we haven't seen her in many movies recently and so when I was seeking out assistance you know, compiling the research for this deep mm-hmm. dive, I did find a, her profile in Upwork. So I did Stop. hire her for four dollars an hour oh. to put together this deep dive. Four dollars. So maybe an you're hour. onto something here. <laughs> I also I fully yeah. believed you. Natalie Herschlag like, in Bangladesh created wow. this. Sorry, what? <laughs> I fully believed you. I was like, what? I was like, she doing voice acting on Upwork or something? Like, That's crazy. I actually like started to feel like a twinge bad. No. She's fine. On Long Island, Syacid High School. Ooh, hello, Syacid. The girls I went to school with had Prada bags and flat ironed hair, and they spoke with an accent I, who had moved there at age nine from Connecticut, mimicked to fit in. Florida oranges, chocolate cherries. Since I'm ancient and the internet was just starting when I was in high school, people didn't really pay that much attention to the fact that I was an actress. I was known mainly at school for having a backpack bigger than I was and always having white out on my hands as I hated seeing anything crossed out in my notebooks. I was voted for my senior yearbook most likely to be a contestant on Jeopardy or code for nerdiest. Oh, when she got to Harvard. Flex, okay, let's get to it. Flex, flex, flex. <laughs> it's, just, it's like every what, sentence what's... had a flex. Every single sentence. Flex, 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 flex. flex. Okay, flex. it's every word. Dude, we wow. are okay. the Natalie stands. Oh, I can't wait for the bad reviews. It's going to be so fun. Okay. So according to Vogue, by the time Natalie was 18, she already had an impressive collection of movie roles and had garnered much respect as an actor in the professional community. She was originally cast as Susan Sarandon's daughter in the 1999 movie Anywhere But Here, but she declined the role due to a love scene that required nudity. 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 <laughs> I love- Noodles. N- nudity. <laughs> Just kidding. And now from a break for our sponsor, Noodley. Noodley. <laughs> Noodley is for all you hoes who don't have the same standards as Natalie Portman, okay? Who won't turn down a, a movie role because it involves Noodley. <laughs> Noodley is for the truly desperate, like Chandler and I. Um, anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm not anyway, the whole point is she basically says to like, I don't want to do a nude scene. So then they take out the nude scene because Susan yeah. Sarandon will only work with Natalie and Natalie triumphs as, you know, the, uh, the, the virtuous young woman who would yep, not yep. go naked. So, okay. So college at Harvard, let's go to that. So Natalie studied psychology at Harvard. What? I'm just deep inhales and exhales. Oh, huh. I was just trying to breathe through this. Just trying to breathe through it. <laughs> Get that Ujjayi breath going Chandler. Cause we got 15 more pages to go. Okay. Okay. Um, this might end up needing to be broken up into a part one, part two. We'll see. I will not so, be a host call- on this podcast if there's a part two of this. I will forsake my <laughs> position. I will abdicate okay, the throne if we have to do a part two. <laughs> um, all right. So college at Harvard. So Natalie studied psychology at Harvard from 1999 to 2003 and even had a published paper called Frontal Lobe Activation During Object Permanence Data from Near Infrared spectroscopy wow um co- i did not read the paper i did not deep dive the paper and get the thesis for this podcast i apologize um college at harvard wasn't easy for natalie she struggled with the workload and felt like she had to prove herself more since she was more in the public eye after the release of star wars this is natalie in vogue I felt like I had to prove myself more and it made me nervous all the time because I felt that people always thought I was there because I was famous and not because I deserved to be there. And so it makes your stupid comment in class even stupider. Everyone's got a moment when they say something really lame, but me, I was like, oh my God, I'm just confirming everyone's belief here. Everyone thinks I'm the dumb actress. I gained my freshman 15 or 20 and had super depressed moments. That Cambridge winter is tough. It was important to know how to go through that and how to get myself out of it. You start learning how to ask your friends or professionals 
professionals for help or go to mentors. Okay, I'm going to say something really annoying right now. Okay. But I think that – I think it's cool she went – she got a degree. I think it's cool that she – like at the high – when, you know, when she was a famous actress, she took the time to get a formal education. Ditto Emma Watson. It's right. cool. Like ultimately, oh. you, they are risking – a huge amount of like their glory days, you know, as the, as ingenues. Right. The, the anecdote you just shared did, you know, humanize her a bit for me. And I do Mm -hmm. think that would be really hard. I think that, yeah, of course you would think, Oh, she just got in because she's famous. I mean, she'd already done star Wars at this point. I I am actually kind of surprised that she went to school like that. It's not like she had just done a few little films. Like she'd done star Wars, which is, you know, when I, I remember when she was in Star Wars and that was like, you know, a part of my sexual awakening was her and Anakin. Um, but we can oh, leave it really? at that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, but please, yeah, she was she, go further. She, no, I won't. Um, she's a mega star. She was a mega star at that point. So, you know, and I think the, yeah, like what more, she says more of a name right them right now for sure. Right. And I, and I do think yeah, she was the when she's, when she says, you know, your stupid comment, is even stupider when you're the actress like that does that rings true and that, you know that would be hard that would be really hard yeah um it would be hard and it would be hard to feel super self-conscious all the time so we're gonna play a small violin really briefly for these years of struggle at cambridge in cambridge for natalie all right so the violin's over natalie continued to <laughs> film movies during her college years during summer break she filmed star wars episode two was cast and was cast in shakespeare in the park productions following her graduation from harvard natalie has been working steadily so here are some of natalie's movies post college garden state cold mountain v for vendetta closer the other boiling girl black swan no strings attached jackie avengers thor So despite making her way through the rigorous years at Harvard, shaving her head for V for Vendetta and all the other demands of her chosen profession, nothing could have prepared Natalie for her role in Black Swan. At the age of 29, Natalie lost roughly 20 pounds off her already extremely petite frame, Mm -hmm. trained up to 16 hours a day and suffered numerous injuries, including a dislocated rib. Natalie told Entertainment Weekly, there were some nights that I thought that I literally thought I was going to die. It was the first time I understood how you get so wrapped up in a role that it could sort of take you down. She got a husband and an Oscar out of it, however, so it all wasn't terrible. Um, Here's an interesting fact. Reportedly, due to budget restrictions, filmmakers couldn't afford both a trailer and a medic for Portman. And so she was told to choose between them and she chose to have a medic. Wow. I mean, that just goes to show she was pushing her body like so to the limit. I, how do you which I just, dislocate yeah. a rib like doing ballet? Well, I'm sure she like fell doing some sort of I know, but st- I mean, the idea of dislocating a rib though sounds so painful. I mean, do you fall on your stomach or your chest? Anyways, that just, that sounds incredibly painful. I mean, there's a reason why you and I will never win some sort of like esteemed no. reward for right. performance art because we quit. We this doesn't this doesn't compute for us. No. Um, I personally would never compromise my body's physical health for an art form. I'm just like not that dedicated to art to honestly. anything. <laughs> to anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it is. It is. It's just. It's honestly like s- scary to even read about. Right. Can I reveal something? Please. I've never seen Black Swan. Oh, you haven't? I haven't seen it. Yeah. So it was directed by Darren Aronofsky. So Chandler, are you familiar with Darren Aronofsky? No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. He is this very famous director and he makes really, really dark movies. Like okay. very dark. Okay. Um, he made a movie recently with Brendan Fraser that explores obesity oh, the called whale? The Whale. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch that? No, I didn't. I I heard a lot of things about it, though. He did Requiem for a Dream. Have you heard about that one? Yep, I've seen that, yeah. I watched that in high school. I don't know how my high school was allowed to play that movie. Yeah, Um, that's pretty insane. Literally ready ready to pick it, Santa Clinton High School, even thinking about that. You send an email. (laughs) Anyway, so yeah, he's like, he he goes dark, super dark. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I highly recommend it. It's definitely a very fun watch. Yeah, Um, Yeah. It's kind of like... The best way to describe it, it's like if center stage was a complete hellscape nightmare, Mm, you know? Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to watch it. 
Um, I really want to watch Center Stage now that I think about it. That's, that movie really slapped. One. Okay, so now that we've gone through the life of Natalie Portman, because that's about all there is to say, um, let's go t- to the relationship, shall we? Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to breeze through a lot of these, everyone, because certain relationships of hers, I would say, are not that interesting, and okay. certain ones are. So, okay, okay. so she first Lead dates Lucas through. Haas. Um, so musician and actor Lucas Hawes, they were rumored to be dating in 1998 after co-starring in the movie together. Everyone says, I love you. Natalie and Lucas claim to be just friends. So sources close to Natalie believe otherwise. Moving on to a slightly more interesting one, Moby. Do you know who Moby is, Chandler? I, is that, does he just have a first name? Yeah. I think he's like a musician that was who okay. came before us before okay. our time. I think okay. he's still with us on the planet. Um, okay. we see Thank God. Yeah. Okay. So he's still around. Moby Richard Melville Hall's his real name is an American musician, singer, songwriter, producer, and animal rights activist. Um, okay. So cool. this is kind of interesting, kind of gross. Okay. So Moby cut claimed to date. So Moby claimed to date Natalie Portman in his memoir, which she denied. So Moby wrote that when he was 33 and Natalie was 20, they had a relationship that he eventually ended after meeting someone else. Natalie shut down Moby's claims by telling Harper's Bazaar, I was surprised to hear that he characterized the very short time that I knew him as dating because my recollection is a my recollection is a much older man being creepy with me when I just graduated from high school. He said I was 20. I definitely wasn't. I was a teenager. I had just wow. turned 18. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Gross. So this is what she continues. She continues and says, I was a fan and went to one of his shows when I had just graduated. When we met after the show, he said, let's be friends. He was on tour and I was working, shooting a film. So we only hung out a handful of times before I realized that this was an older man who was interested in me in a way that felt inappropriate. Um, so Moby initially doubled down on his relationship with Natalie on his Instagram saying, I completely respect Natalie's possible regret in dating me. To be fair, I would regret dating me too, but it doesn't alter the actual facts of our brief romantic history. Wow. After a heavy criticism, Moby later apologized on Instagram. I just feel like every girl has a coming of age story like this. Like every so many of us, we graduate from high school and very quickly some like creepy older guy starts. Mm -hmm. It's like such a moment when you realize that I know you have different experiences with this maybe, yeah. but beyond your like best friends from high school or like true friends, most of the time, like especially guys that are 14 years older than you, uh, when you're 20, they're not interested in like being pen pals, you know? No, no. Absolutely not. It's not the interlocution they're after. Um, and I think that it's such a, I don't know, I have my own feelings about it, but it's just like this dark thing that happens when you have to become jaded and like assume people want mm-hmm. something else from you. Right, right. Then your brilliant insights. Um, and yeah, so I kind of, I definitely like totally related to that because I yeah. had my own moment, had my own moments with creepy older guys. Also, it's so funny to think about how when you're 18, 33 is so old. Like it's so much older. Right. Well, and and even looking back like from the other way, it's like when you're 33 or when you're, you know, like I think about like, I don't know, Ben's about to be 32. Like if he was dating an 18-year-old, like what? No, it's it's gross. It's like it's so gross. It's it's beyond a 19 year old, a 20 year old. Like I it's bizarre. And and I just and there's so many times where people, you know, date I mean, I dated someone who was much older, and you don't think that it's that weird when you're in that phase. You don't think about it. I don't know. What do you mean you who doesn't think about it? I think you don't think it's actually that big of a deal. You don't like I guess for me, like when I when I had that particular as relationship, the girl or the guy, as the older person. I, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. As the girl, like I didn't you know, I was twenty and he was thirty one and I didn't think he was that that much older than me. I thought mm-hmm. like I just didn't see him as in a wildly different life phase than me. But now that I'm closer to that age, I see the wild disparity in those ten years. Yeah. 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 I mean, 18 and 33 is like much starker to me than, than 20 and 31 or mm-hmm. cause I, you know, I, oh, I yeah. think that there's yeah, something yeah. that's like almost double that person's age. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
but you're right. It is very interesting. Like it'll be interesting to get to like the age Leo is and mm -hmm. then see like 20 year olds and be like, right. Cause I had this, I've had the same moment where I've been at like a dinner and there's like a 19 year old there now it's like, I'm 32 and like, or, or like, I remember one specifically with a family dinner and one of the people there was 19 and Ashley had been like, you know, talking up how great her skin was all week. And she's like, you know, I basically look like a 19 year old. And so I remember I was like looking at this actual 19 year old and I was like, this person is so young. So this person young. is literally a baby. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is just like interesting to think about, like, you wonder if like, like the exploitation is just like part of the interest, you know? Like being yeah. with someone who's kind of dumb, who doesn't know it's anything, dark. who doesn't have well, like the wisdom. I think there's, you know, at times a little bit of a novelty factor of like, mm -hmm. I'm dating someone who's much younger than me. That's almost like a party trick or something where it's, yeah. You, and also you look in this warped mentality, maybe you look cooler, younger, hotter because you're dating someone much younger. I don't know. It's like a reflection well, you of yourself. You think you do. But what, you think you do. Yeah, exactly. Like, and meanwhile, the, the, most people are laughing. Right. Or, or most people are like, this is actually so messed up. And 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 also, yeah. it's gross. It's gross that you think that this person and you like have a lot in common or that you're actually like a, an appropriate match. Where I, like, I could see that. I could see being a 30-year-old and dating a 42-year-old. Totally. But it's just totally. so different when the person that's like, was a child so recently. Yep. Yeah. The sub 25 is very, very odd to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, what's interesting too, though, I will say is like, like Al Pacino is 80 Ugh. and just had a baby with a 29 year old. <sighs> and like, I bet you in their head, they think they're like rock star cool. Oh yeah. And like, like it's hot to We're them. like laughing. Like people yeah. are like, think it's embarrassing. Like it's, it's so transparent mm -hmm. that she's after mm -hmm. his resources. Right. And it's right. just so like, it's so embarrassing and sad. It, yeah. And so anyway, I just, I find it interesting to like think about how people think they're perceived, but then the reality, you know? Right. Right. Okay. But anyway, so let's get back to Natalie, Natalie yeah. Portman. So she, oh, she goes on to date Hayden Christensen in 2001 and 2011. Oh, so Natalie hot. And Hayden were coast. So hot. Absolutely. I mean this, that's Anakin. Natalie and Hayden were co-stars in Star Wars episode one and two is Anna. Sorry. I'm not Star Wars familiar. So is that the name no, that's you just okay. mentioned about your sexual awakening? Yeah. 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 The two of them okay. were, my, were my sexual awakening or were part of it. I wasn't sure if Anakin was like the robot person. So I thought that was maybe oh you my gosh. Some sort of like weird joke. No, I wasn't making a weird joke. I mean, I, I would, but no, this is, this was real. This was sincere. Okay, I can understand Hayden Christensen being part of that very formative moment in your life because, yeah, Absolutely. he's extremely hot. Extremely hot. Neither party ever confirmed their relationship, but there was plenty of gossip. There is even suspicion that Hayden broke Natalie's heart as she spoke about heartbreak during her Harvard commencement, sh commencement speech. As she spoke about heartbreak during her Harvard commencement speech. And the relationship timeline matches up. In an old interview, Hayden is asked about whether he fell in love with Natalie just a little bit. Do you fall in love with Natalie just a little bit? I mean, you know, you, you have to a little bit if, if you're really going to, you know, believe yourself in the role. We're, we're you know, pretty good friends now. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's something that you just have to sort of believe. So it's, it's yeah, I mean, you know, she's, she's someone that I, I spent three months, you know, sort of looking at with <laughs> most of the Dewey eyes. Yeah, I, you know, I tried my best. <laughs> okay, so... Natalie, then Chandler, you'll, all our listeners will, you know, hear this tale all too well, um, because Natalie oh, goes on to have a 2002 fling and a 2006 fling with Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, um, my gosh. she's actually, so I don't know if you know this, but a couple years ago, she released a memoir about the experience. Um, what? And really? it's like, this, yeah, she, it's this very gripping book that oh. she released. Um, You're and telling a she, lie. I can tell. At the book yeah. opening, at the book opening <laughs> for this, she, it was crazy because um, she showed up and she, you know, just had ex known the experience. I don't know. Never mind. Everyone gets Are you making a joke about the All Too Well music video right now with Taylor Swift? <laughs> yeah. oh yes, gosh. I am. Thank I was you say for she that. showed up in like a scarf. She, um, she dyed 30, her hair red. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She dyed her hair red. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're so in a French twist. Recording, watch that music video. Yeah. yeah. Um, she made her like, can we just say really quick? 
the fact that that ending of that video is the girl who'd been spurned made her entire life an identity about this one like failed relationship is just like the height of the <sighs> height of fallibility in Taylor Swift. I mean, I l- literally, I love the music video until the last 90 seconds. It's so bad. It's um, so but bad. anyway, you're welcome everyone for bringing some sort of color to this relationship because mm-hmm. there's literally nothing else to say except that they were spotted together by paparazzi in 2002 and 2006. Okay. So Chandler, this is where things start getting spicier. So in 2004, between 2004 and 2007, Natalie dates Gail Garcia Bernal. So Natalie and Gail, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Gail? Gail? Because it sounds like Oprah and Gail, but I think it is Gail, right? I need to look him up. I don't know. Oh, you? Okay, you don't know. Gail Garcia Bernal was like that really hot Latin actor who was very like big for a, for a minute. I don't know what he's up to now. I'm looking now. But look him up. Oh, you'll, yeah. You'll recognize him. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I remember. I don't, to me, he's not that hot, but that's just me. Okay. Well, well, all right. So Chandler, I, I love your high standards. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they never spoke about their relationship, but there are enough paparazzi photos to see that they were definitely together. Kien reports that Natalie and Gail first met at a post Oscars party, but the initial relationship was short lived by 2006 to the, to 2007. They were back on as photos of them together at the China club in Berlin came out. There were also many instances of them both being in the same city where one was working or filming, which, which would suggest that they were spending time together. Things got real dramatic in 2007 when according to Reuter.com, Natalie flew to Argentina to confront Gail over rumors that he was cheating on her with actress <gasps> Dolores Fonzi. So, so yes. So he was wow. on a movie set in Argentina mm-hmm. and he starts cheating on Natalie. She gets wow. wind of this. She flies out to Argentina to confront this bitch. Oh my um, things did not go well. And there are photos and videos of Natalie shoving paparazzi cameras out of her face. So it's pretty what? wild. The night ended with Portman and Fonzie facing each other, facing off with each other in a supposed fight. What? However... I, I know, I know. You thought you thought this was going to p- hit its crescendo when we got right. to the emails with her and Jonathan Safran mm-hmm. Fors, mm-hmm. or potentially the most recent scandal. But no, Chandler. No. Um. Yeah, she flew out to Argentina to confront the mistress, Ariana style. Um. She even had a cutout red floral length dress on when she stormed into the restaurant. What? Um. No, that I added that. That was a joke. Um. She did not <laughs> wear the same outfit as Ariana. But yeah, she did confront the mistress. Wow. Um, the night ended with them facing off. And a couple days later, Gail Garcia Bernal and Natalie Portman traveled to Southern Argentina and seemed to have reconciled for a time. However, they finally broke up. And then guess what, Chandler? Gail what? Garcia Bernal goes on to marry Dolores Fonzi, wow. the woman from the film, and have children together. But of course, that relationship, which began under the dark night of infidelity, yeah. has dissolved. So wow, I gotta look up Dolores. Anyway, how it starts, wow. generally how it ends. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So in 2007, Natalie starts dating Nathan Bogle. Um, Nathan Bogle is a model and a co-founder of Rag and Bone, one of the co-founders of Rag and Bone. Okay. He's also Jewish and friends with Jude Law. Um, cool. And Natalie, you know doesn't usually flaunt her relationships, but there's quite a few paparazzi photos of the two where they're more affectionate than what we usually see from the demure Israeli actress. There were rumors in 2007 that she was dating Jude Law and that they hooked up after the rap party for My Blueberry Nights, where they left a party together at 2 a.m. Hot. Love that. Yeah. Another rumored man was a British millionaire Nathan Rothschild, and they were spotted out together on more than a couple Mm -hmm. occasions. Also rumored in 2007 was a busy year for Natalie. Okay, Get it, girl. Also in 2007, Natalie is rumored to be dating Andy Samberg. Uh, love Andy Samberg. That's fun. Yes. Natalie and Andy appeared on SNL together in March 2006, but there were rumors of them dating in 2007 after she split up with Gail. Andy's SNL castmate at the time, Keenan Thompson, said, if Andy is dating Natalie, I am extremely jealous. Um, so another... Another suitor for Natalie Portman was Devandra Benhart. Is that how you pronounce it? Oh, yeah. That's like a... He's a musician. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Portman dated the Texas native in 2008, starring in the music video for his song Carmencita. The pair were frequently spotted strolling New York City together. Devandra, Devandra, Devendra, excuse me, Devandra. Devandra. I can't today. Mary Devandra. Land, Devandra. 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 You know? Sounds like uh, a housewife. As he was cavorting through Mar- Maryland, said to Vulture, she's one of my best friends. I love her super much, super much. Okay. So this is a fun fact, fun little relationship. But in 2009, Natalie was rumored to be dating Rodrigo Santoro. Rodrigo Santoro is the super hot guy in a ton of the fragrance commercials. And he's okay. an actor. He's also stored in love, starred in Love Actually, opposite Laura Linney's character. Okay. He was like the, just the extremely hot man. Look okay. up Rodrigo Santoro and you will know San- exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Very so, hot. Wow. Love that for Natalie. Not yeah, in a past truly. way. A true way. Um, Famousfix.com reported sources claimed in 2009 that Natalie and Rodrigo were an item, though they were keeping a low profile. He denied the rumors, but did say the two were ficando, which translates to something fun, but not too serious. Hmm. JustJared.com reported they are trying to keep a low profile, but he is a very sweet guy. And to make things more interesting, Ryan Gosling has been in the mix as well. After splitting with Rachel McAdams, he's been texting her all the time and asking her to hang out. Wow. So it's unclear how the relationship began, Chandler, but things were long over when they worked together in the 2015 movie Jane's Got a Gun. Despite this, In Touch Weekly reported that their co-star status caused tension between Natalie and her husband, Benjamin. So they dated and then they later started a movie together. Yeah, they dated. They they later worked together. Got it. No, no, we're talking. This is about Rodrigo Santoro. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so this is kind of a seedy blip on the radar for Natalie. But in 2009, she was rumored to be dating Sean Penn. So according to a spy at New York Magazine, Natalie Portman and Sean Penn were busted making out at the Sunset Towers in Los Angeles. The spy was returning from the bathroom when it happened. I had to go through some curtains, and that's when I interrupted Sean and Natalie. When they saw me, they were startled and quickly composed themselves. Okay. A spy. So that's that's according to the reports. Okay. A spy. Spy. Chandler, spies are not just for foreign government espionage. They're also for gossip reporting at Sunset Towers in LA. Okay. Okay. You know, if our tax dollars should go to anything... It's to these kind of espionage agents. Absolutely. All right. So this brings us to Chandler, the Esposo, Benjamin Mil- Millipier. Apparently, it is not Millipede. It's Millipier. Okay. So Excuse when we me. broke down the recent cheating scandal on our most recent episode, everyone, mm-hmm. um, I incorrectly pronounced Benjamin's last name as Millipede because that's how it's spelled. Right. Um, but apparently, it's French and it's actually pronounced Millipier. Okay. Um, but I think Millipede, Millipede is a lot more apropos mm-hmm. given the actions of this, you know, frankly, frankly immoral man. Right. This creature of some sort. Exactly. Um, Natalie and Benjamin Millipier met in November 2009 on the set of Black Swan, for mm-hmm. which he did the choreography. They fell in love while filming. Of course, the problem, Chandler, as we discussed, is that right. he was... So apologies if everyone... We kind of already went over this last episode, but we're just going to do it again so this episode can stand on its own as its own study of Natalie Portman's life in its own right. Um, So the problem at the time was Benjamin was in a long-term live-in relationship with fellow dancer and principal dancer at the American Ballet Theater, Isabella Boylston. Benjamin and Isabella had an East Village apartment, and they had just finished traveling the world together when Benjamin began his work on Black Swan. So I actually had someone write in, and they said that that Isabella was working on Black Swan as well, right? Mm, And she said that she she said she literally watched – as Natalie and Benjamin fell in love, oh. um, which is just so, she said it was just like so gutting and horrible That's to watch. Horrendous. Yeah. And she just basically Ugh. like surrendered herself to her fate. Right. Um, yeah. Wow. Which is so sad. So Benjamin proposed to Natalie in December 2010 with a conflict-free diamond. Jewelry designer Jamie Wolf told People Magazine, Ben was exceptionally thoughtful and dedicated and patient to make sure we had everything right with the ring. We wanted everything about the ring to speak to the things that were important to Natalie. It featured recycled platinum and an antique diamond. 
When the news of their engagement and pregnancy became public, Natalie said to Entertainment Weekly, I've always kept my private life private, but I will say that I'm indescribably happy and feel very grateful to have this experience. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I just want to share one clip of Natalie accepting the Golden Globe for winning Black Swan because I think it is like, it is so like, she's so giddy and she describes like their them falling in love on the set of it and fully like is laughing about how he wanted to sleep with her and it just is very very insensitive yeah it's like it's the most bizarre acceptance speech and moment um but it just seems so insensitive to isabella right or isabel and thank you to benjamin who is helping me continue this creation of creating more life um who benjamin choreographed the film and also you might remember him in the movie as the guy when they ask uh, would you sleep with that girl and he's like no he's the best actor it's not true he totally wants to sleep with me <laughs> um, <laughs> can you believe that like uh, i mean she's fully giddy she's like brimming with joy and she's, happiness she's brimming with joy and she's fully like um, gleeful at having had an affair with this other girl's fiance. It's gross. It's super gross. And right. it's like the strangest, like most, I don't know, nerdiest laugh. I'm not a fan of this moment. No. Okay. So anyway, Natalie and Benjamin were married in front of family and friends at an oceanfront home in Big, Big Sur on August 4th, 2012. The Jewish ceremony was held after dark and Natalie walked down the aisle in a gown by Rodarte. The couple exchanged vows and ended things with Millipede Millipede smashing a glass to shouts of Mazel Tov. Ivanka Trump and Macaulay Culkin were in the audience and oh, wow. guests ate a vegan meal and went home with packets of wildflower seeds as party fa- favors. No thanks. Sounds like a banger. No thanks to the wildflower <laughs> seeds. Those are going in the trash. <laughs> what a waste okay um yeah you could tell black swan did not have a big budge because clearly those two uh were on a shoestring budget when they were coming up with party favors clearly okay so the couple welcomed daughter amalia in february 2017 which caused natalie to miss the academy award ceremony where she was nominated for best actress for her appearance as jackie i think we might have skipped over this but they also had a son mm. yeah because she was was she pregnant right after black Swan? she was pregnant yeah mm-hmm. she was pregnant right anyway so they have a son they have a daughter um and the marriage did not grab any headlines chandler everything seemed to be going along mm-hmm. slim swimmingly for these two until just last month may 2023 when it was learned that benjamin was having an affair with 25 mm-hmm. year old climate activist camille etienne So a source told people it was short-lived and it is over. He knows he made an enormous mistake and he is doing all he can to get Natalie to forgive him and keep their family together. Natalie is incredibly private and has no intention of playing this out in the media. Her biggest priority is protecting her children and their privacy. So this is obviously Natalie has been through the ringer with this. Mm -hmm. She, Gail Garcia Bernal cheated on her. Her hands are not clean though, since she did participate um, in the cheating with Benjamin, which is how her relationship began. Right. right. Um, so we already talked about that last episode. So we'll leave that there. The last thing I want to touch on before we mm-hmm. depart, everyone, mm-hmm. is Natalie's relationship with Jonathan Safran for. Okay. 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 So a lesser known but still noteworthy relationship of Natalie Portman was one that was shockingly one-sided. Years ago, Natalie Portman read Jonathan Safran Foer's book, Eating Animals. She loved it and became vegan as a result. She even signed on to make a documentary based on the book. They emailed a lot, as colleagues often do, and became friends. The cut described Natalie and Jonathan's emails as the kind of intense midnight musings, lengthy, pretentious digressions on Jewish melancholy and the nature of freedom that one might pen if one wanted to convince a very famous and beautiful actress to leave her husband for you. In the emails published in the New York Times style magazine, Natalie says things like etymology might see this is this is Natalie's email to Jonathan Safran for 
Etymology might seem dry, but the connections between words feel to me like the connectedness I felt while giving birth, that I was related to every woman who had ever given birth throughout time. I guess it's having an experience that gives you a feeling of wonder to use your words that you can feel that you can then feel that you share with people, not just people around you or people exposed to the things they're exposed to, but people in the desert looking at slightly younger versions of the same stars while herding sheep and believing that lightning was the wrath of God. Wow. Yeah. So quite the the musings Mm -hmm. that went back and forth between both a married Natalie and a married Benjamin. Um, So I want to- Mary Jonathan? I'm sorry, Mary Jonathan. Thank you, Chandler. Um, I have a few more that I think we should just do a quick reading of together. Okay, okay, please. So this is Jonathan on May 26, 2016. It's Thursday, garbage day. One of the garbage days, I should say. Thursday and Sunday are garbage days again. Tuesday is garbage and recycling day. Monday and Tuesday are alternate side parking days, which makes Tuesday parking, garbage, and recycling a very special day indeed. Why don't you read one for Natalie's? Okay. Wow. Um, I am woefully lacking ritual in my life, which is among the hardest things and best things about my work. I will never have the boredom or or repetitiveness of an office. This is Natalie. An ex-boyfriend of mine used to call me Moscow because he said I was always looking out the window, sadly, like Moscow, like some Russian novel or Chekhov play. Jonathan. Hello from Blue Ridge Summit. All the cousins slept in the same room last night, which required half a dozen new amendments to the Constitution. Natalie, acting is not like music or dance or drawing, where there is a clear technique that you need to work obsessively to master, and then your individuality makes you more than just a computer who's learned a skill. Okay, I got to go to sleep, though. There's some loud Harry Potter music blasting in the house. Here's the thing. Um, Yeah. I think we've read enough. We have. It's inappropriate. It's totally inappropriate. It reminds me of when you're texting somebody who that you're newly into and you are just trying Mm -hmm. to make your life sound very interesting. You're trying to, you know, engage in banter, you know, in a way that is inappropriate, I think, with someone you who's married and while you're married. Yes. These are like these are these emails are all about like, in my opinion, and maybe people will think that I'm like so jaded, but I think that they're both like peacocking to each other. Yes. Like they're, oh, they're absolutely. doing like brain peacocking. Yes. Yes. Like look at how interesting and thoughtful right. I am I, mm-hmm. and look, be turned on by it in my opinion. Totally. 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 Look at how interesting I can make the everyday, you know, um, with my musings. I also think when she says I got to go to sleep though. That to me, like all these emails are from different, you know, moments in time, these excerpts, but that definitely looks like they had been emailing back and forth, talking very often, you know, to the point where she says, I have to go to sleep. Yes. Like that's inappropriate. It's you inappropriate. just don't do that yeah. with as two committed married Mm-mm. people. Mm-mm. Um, and of course you don't do that because look at what happened. So Jonathan Saffron four, um, and this is actually the part of it that I think is the most interesting. Um, Jonathan Saffron four, he left his wife for Natalie Portman. What? Um, yes. So he leaves his wife because they're having these exchanges mm-hmm, that are very mm-hmm, intimate, mm-hmm. maybe not sexually explicit, but they're right. intimate exchanges. Intimate. There's no doubt about that. Right, right. And he he believes that they're like falling in love. So he leaves right. his wife, Nicole, um, Nicole Krauss, and another writer. She's actually written some beautiful books. And um, he tells Natalie that he's in love with her and has left his wife for her. And then Natalie lets him know, I do not reciprocate the feelings. Wow. Um, and basically kind of her take was like, it's super weird that he got this idea that I was into him Crazy. and left his wife for me. Here's my hot take. It's actually not that weird. I think no. that if you are journaling back and forth, right. live journal status to each other, to another man, mm-hmm. you are telling mm-hmm. that person Who- like, I'm into you. Who you've publicly, ta- it's publicly too- talked about admiring. Yes. Yeah. Like, it is so inappropriate on so yeah. many levels. Um, so, anyway, I just think that, like, I think that Natalie, and maybe this is me being jaded, but Natalie clearly enjoys being the one that the guy is is interested in. She clearly enjoys be, being like beguiling, right? Totally. Oh, being absolutely. Being a little bewitching. Yeah. Being the muse. She mm-hmm. loves being the oh, muse. Oh, she loves. An ex-boyfriend of mine used to call me Moscow. Because Just- <laughs> I'm always looking out the window. Yeah. 
like the self aggrandizing yeah. is so embarrassing yeah and i think that i think that like she i my take is that she gaslit him so he leaves his wife for her mm-hmm. and then she's like what are you talking about i just also we're not don't, this is it this yeah. is just pen pals i yeah i um i don't know how you go from you know these emails like there there had to be a few more steps in between him getting a divorce um but yeah it definitely feels like right. she you know it was one thing and then she told him in in retrospect it actually wasn't that at all yeah there's clearly more to this story yeah. than what is available on the dark web unfortunately right. right so we weren't there we we don't have her emails we can find them about as well as we can find hillary's emails at this point right so so we'll just have to read between the lines chandler but it's i think true. it's pretty clear it's true so, all right anyway i hope everyone enjoyed this deep dive on the life and lovers of natalie portman truly hope you enjoyed it please chandler Thank you for listening go enjoy maine take pictures thank you thank you for hopping on to record during a vacation your dedication really is so impressive i love you thank you you. i love you too if you like this podcast uh leave us a review and you know if you really really like it and you want to share it on your stories with a link to your favorite episode that's amazing or an episode you've recently enjoyed we love that too we truly appreciate everyone sharing you know the good word so thank you love you all love you all bye bye catch you next week bye